It's going to stick one of these times I'm going to be done for. Oh yeah, there it goes. It's cooking the freaking tungsten, I guarantee it. Once again, we're going to have to beef this down. Hey, what's up, fellas? I'm going to be building a Birkeland Ide reactor to make my own nitric acid for stainless steel work. But first, I had to do some experimentation and determine what is the most efficient electrode configuration possible. So this is basically the equation that we're hitting. And we got to have that 3,000 Celsius in there or it don't work. Damn, China. What the hell? That wasn't supposed to happen. I want to make some nitric acid from thin air and electricity. The reason why is I do a lot of stainless steel work. And I paid like $70 for this bottle of nitric, nitric acid. And this is a nitric acid paste that's used to passivate stainless steel after you weld it. All right, guys. So one of the fundamental requirements of converting nitrogen into nitrous oxide is that 3000 degree temperature requirement. So we're gonna find out what arc is the hottest. And I can tell you right now, the Jacob's ladder is not looking too good in this test. And I see a lot of people building some these machines using the Jacob's ladder. And I've come to the conclusion that that large wallop at the top is just a waste of electricity. So you can see here, we decide to just do an arc candle to see how hot that is. but. We're more in the ozone regime here, guys. This is not a 3,000 degree plasma. This is like a 300 degree ozone plasma. Anyone who's ever built an ozone generator knows what I'm talking about. This is more of a corona type plasma. It's not super hot like an arc welder. Um, it is hot, but it's not hot enough. It's very inefficient to run this type of spark gap in the Birkelandide reactor. So here's an even larger Jacobs ladder that I did to just kind of see if it would produce more gas in an hour period. And this is about as dark as it gets, no matter how long you run it. But when you run a small tight arc like this here, I've got a pointed end so that the um, we get that super hot point. These are tungsten electrodes though. Unfortunately, I learned those aren't gonna work. But nonetheless, look how much gas it produces because it's a smaller, tiny, hotter arc, and it gives us that 3,000 degree temperature requirement that we have to convert the nitrogen into nitrous oxide. All right, fellas, these large, big plasma arcs, this is not what's creating the gas. We're not making ozone. We, I can't stress that enough. And I see a lot of you guys building ozone machines who are trying to construct these. That's one of the first things that jumped out at me. I'm not trying to sound like a know-it-all. I'm trying to help the community out. There's a lot of people trying to build this machine and this is a bad way to go. This gas will not get brown no matter how long we let this run. You can see it's barely brown in there, but it's been running for an hour. Look how big the spark is compared to the last run for an hour on the little spark. All right, fellas, so this preliminary testing has brought an attribute to Thompson my attention that I already knew of, of and I just forgot about it. And that is you can't get it over 800 degrees in oxygen or it turns into a beautiful yellow powder. And it's gonna cover this whole glass in a yellow scaly like um, muck. We're gonna be giving this transformer a test also. That's a pretty cool little unit right here. I wish I remember how many volts this thing is. I want to say it's 15,000 volts. You can see here, this is the, the primary winding. And it's got quite a little piece of kit running that. Somebody built this, a guy, um, this gentleman right here Okay, so the flyback transformer, not doing so hot. Nowhere near as powerful as the big old neon signer. Well, I got a couple other transformers we could try. Maybe it would work, but 
Again, this is more of an ozone deal, I feel. I don't know what I think about this one either. It ain't too shabby, I guess. It's got kind of a nice ripple to it, but again, I worry we're not getting that high intense heat we want. We're only at a lousy 31 watt, so I don't like that. That's a no-go. All right. So this is the transformer here. It's a little dirty. Been sitting next to the plasma table for two years. And this is the driver for that transformer. All right, so we're on low power. We started off at like 66 watts. So this is about 20 watts. You hear the cooling fan on that thing roaring. And it's giving us that intense little blue beam there. I'm gonna turn this up. Ooh, it's getting hot. Look how freaking hot that's getting. It's getting that tungsten rod really hot. I gotta check the water. Lights on here. Huh. We're a lousy 137 watts. And 60 of this is this fan. Why is that so hot? But yet it won't do the Jacob's ladder. Isn't that weird? I guess this is gonna test the high heat principle. Man, that's just crazy. I'm gonna turn it up. I'll try to do it with you looking. Whoa, dude. That thing's going freaking crazy. I wish you could see what I'm seeing. That's only 153 watts. It's kind of weird. Ooh, we're getting brown gas. I don't know that that's more efficient. Can you see that? It is brown gas and what's going on here? Oh crap. The water just went up big time. I think we just smoked the tungsten rod there. That white smoke, I think, might be tungsten rod. Here it goes, it's gonna do it again. Whoa. Oh, there's an over voltage cutout that's in here, I think. There it goes. Yeah, it pops right out. This is kinda cool. What a strange little spark. And then it'll just kind of pop off. Like, boom. We're about ready to start a fire with those gloves all sticking up in there like that. So, yeah, man, I don't know. This thing is weird, dude. I mean, I could turn it up, but I'm afraid to. Gotta be something to do with the high frequency. Let's try and turn it up more. That's really powerful there. I don't know if this is sustainable, dude. <laughs> oh man, look at them rods. Them babies are screaming. Oh. That's a little more like it, Jack. That is a hot play. I can hear it whistle. We certainly don't want it to keep doing that. It'll break this glass and catch everything on fire. And I almost bet it's gonna smoke this glass out. That white smoke coming off the of tungsten rods. Yeah, that can't be good. I don't know if this is suitable, guys. Certainly a high temp bugger, that's for sure. Man, 
and I don't know what to do. What a strange creature. It's gonna stick one of these times I'm gonna be done for. Oh yeah, there it goes. I gotta quit it. I gotta shut it off. It's cooking the freaking tungsten, I guarantee it. So, once again, we're gonna have to beef this down. Okay, that's a lot tighter. That appear to be getting a whole lot hotter though. Not seeing that smoke plume. Yeah, hard to say, hard to say. There is a little baby arc on it. Not really nothing to write home about. Let's draw it out now and see what a big arc will do for us. So I've increased the arc, but I think I'm convinced that smoke that we see is the freaking tungsten tip literally vaporizing away. And that's not gonna be long term. Okay, we've switched over to stainless steel electrodes and I've balled the ends. Okay, here it goes. And she fires up, that's a good sign. It's self-igniting. So, the testing we've just done shows that a small, hot, tight arc is always going to be better than a big old fat, feathery arc. So we'll see how this does. And tungsten's a no-go. Tungsten creates yellow tungsten oxide, and that's just not suitable for this. It'll clog up this whole thing and do who knows what. It'll eventually burn up the electrode. You know, one of the things that I really like about these stainless steel electrodes is the fact that stainless steel is such a poor conductor of heat that you get that trapped heat right there at the electrode ends. And that's what we need for the chemical conversion. We've got to have that 3000 Celsius or else we're just making ozone. This is the chemical equation we have got to hit. Damn, China. What the hell? That wasn't supposed to happen. I'm a little confused. Well, she. I guess I'll have to cool this thing. Hmm. Nonetheless, this is the electrode we're gonna go with. I don't even have to have this in a glass reactor, really. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I just lost that piece of glass where it may simply because it wasn't annealed for a while. So there it is, man. That's kind of what we're gonna try and go with. See how this works out. Okay, even though it's broke, I think this one beats them all. That looks darker than all the rest. Red hot stainless steel electrodes are the way to go. Essentially, this will be kind of the end goal. What we have here is the arc chamber that produces the nitric oxide, which is the brown gas, at a ratio of about 1.5 to 2%, which is then sent to the oxidation chamber. We have to oxidate that brown gas into NO2, which is nitrogen dioxide. And then the nitrogen dioxide is dissolved in water. And that gives us this equation here. And we end up with two different chemical compounds. We have nitric acid, which is what we're going for, and I think it's called nitrous acid. I'll have to check. The nitrous acid can be released from the water by heating, and that's this equation down here, and in that process, it also releases more nitric oxide. So that nitric oxide would then be sent into a secondary oxidation chamber, bubbled through another water column, and which would also have a heater not shown, and we have a condensation bubbler here to stop any of our fluids 
from evaporating away rapidly. I and mean, you see here, they are all connected by a common line that would keep the fluid level consistent. And this is kind of one of the strategies I'm gonna to deploy to try and make some cheap nitric acid, maybe even with a solar panel at some point. And this thing could just run all year long. 